Raquel with Paints and Glitter and today I'm coming to you with a short little video sharing a couple of things that I'm making. I previously shared a video response for Jeannie at Happily Ella After featuring her Just Because challenge and part of that challenge included that you could um, send in some um, two inch embellishments, a, a hat pin or a, either a birthday card or a thank you card. That's what it was. So I I've been watching some videos online as I craft because what I do is I'll tend to have it in the background just you know whether it be music or or videos and I came across a few videos featuring house mouse stamps and I just remembered of course that I was given by a lovely friend of mine uh, I inherited some stamps from her and some of them were house mouse stamps because she's not a crafter so she gave them to me and that was such a beautiful blessing to to be able to receive such a gift like that and there are some of the older ones and once I saw those videos I thought you know I haven't really played with some of those at all and that's a shame so I got them out and I the one of the reasons I wanted to use them is because my son my youngest son I should say really loves house mouse uh, stamps and he's away for the week so I decided to make him a card a uh, little postcard <laughs> and uh, I thought you know what what a great excuse to go ahead and get those stamps out and make him a little something also to send in the mail and what I'm going to do is I'll show you here this the one that I used the image it's old so it's because of this was stacked I guess with some other stamps they lost some of them lost their you know their little image that they come with there so you can tell there's like you don't know what that is but uh this one's called mice scream what am i saying mice i'm sorry <laughs> mice cream cone i can't say that fast and this features mud pie with a little kitten this was from 2001 so they're i guess you know they're from this was the design of the month from july 2001 and i'll show you what it stamps like what i did was um that i colored in the image i first of all i stamped it on craft cardstock using uh prismacolor pencils and that's what i love to do with these particular types of stamps here they are I just wanted to show you. I have these pencils and I use them quite a bit when I'm coloring my stamped images for the reason that it's very relaxing, first of all. <laughs> and secondly, they offer a good punch of color, um, depending, of course, on how you use them. But I wanted to send my son this one because we had a cat for many years. We lost her last um, last September and uh, we miss her dearly. So she didn't look like this, however, but I went ahead and just wanted to use that little image there. And what I did was after I colored it was I covered the, the cone and the, their little tongues <laughs> with glossy accents. So I'm sorry if that doesn't uh, focus too well. I'm realizing here it's probably very blurry, but there they are. They're sharing their little cone and I'm just going to write on here, you know, missing you or something like that. And as you can tell there's lavender in the background there and that's that is um you know one of the coloring pencils and then something really interesting happened actually when i added the glossy accents to this uh area there that i had colored it kind of changed the coloring um which i thought was kind of in it was kind of cool it's kind of like a chemical reaction i suppose because there is a wax um in the pen that that type of pencil but anyway I like it oh and what I wanted to say was other than you know of course I stamped and colored an image I use the um, the die stamp set from Santoro which is called postcard and it comes with this which I had showed previously but this piece here cuts out a postcard so how perfect is that um, now, because I did not use a 110 pound card or, you know, heavier, what I did was that I cut it out twice and you're probably going to notice there it doesn't match um, the little notches there. That's because I doubled it up and I adhered the, you know, the same image on the back. 
So the, the little crisscross pattern there doesn't match, but I'm not at all concerned with that because this is going to a young child, which would be my son. Um, so enough of that. And then the other image that I stamped out is this one here, which is absolutely stunning. And this is what's um, appealing about the house mouse stamps, at least for me, is that, um, you know, they're, they're not lacking in detail as far as the you know artistic rendering is goes for the actual images that are included with the little mice because you know if you know anything about illustration you'll notice that they're so accurate in in terms of how they're drawn out and i don't know maybe i'm just rambling but i am very impressed with them because of that and that's what you know is appealing to me but this one is May 1999 design of the month and this is called Ballooning for Berries and that one features Mud Pie. How beautiful is that, right? And I mean, this is the kind of stamp that you don't even need to color in for it to be beautiful, but I did go ahead and color that one. I stamped it on craft cardstock again because this is the look that I was going for. I used Stays On ink in gray just so you know because I did not want black lines I have done them with black ink in the past and for some reason I felt like it just lost its detail even though you know sometimes you you think black ink is gonna bring out the detail of a stamp sometimes it's the opposite is what happens but to each his own there's no wrong way to do it what I did here was that I used of course the pencils I blended in several different colors when I color with the these pencils the reason I don't film it is because I could be here all day you know trying to edit a video of coloring but I like to use four or five different colors on each image there to get that effect. The pinks here, I think I used three different pinks maybe. So the little berries to make those stand out. And I'm going to cut this down and make it into a card because I thought to cut it out with this also. But if I do that because of the way that I placed it on here, I'm so afraid of ruining it. I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> because <laughs> this took a lot of work. I've decided I'm going to put this on top of white cardstock to make it stand out a little bit more and I think I might um, distress the edges but I want to make a five, let's see here, five and a half. I still need to cut a little bit off of this. I need to make it a five inch wide card. I've cut a piece of paper four and a quarter by eleven which is going to be my base for a four, four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And I'm just going to score this at five and a half. Very gently because I have the tendency to, to score too firmly sometimes. And that sort of ruins the card. But I'm just using my Martha Stewart bone folder and uh, board to give this a nice crease and I had said that I wanted to film with a different backdrop because of the glare on this and I do apologize that I, I'm aware there's glare on my surface but it is impossible for me to craft on a surface now that is not glass because I have spoiled myself um, I'm gonna cut this down a little bit because my image is still far too large for the cover. I mean, not much, but I want to give it a border there because it's very precise. Oh, lovely. Okay. So, let's see here. I always get one side that's a little bit better than the other when I fold the paper, but it is handmade. You must remember that. I think I'm going to ink the edges of my base paper because the difference is quite stark and I don't have any white on my colored image. I'm going to use Walnut Stain to ink the base of my card. And I have this foam here that probably has three different color inks on it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else does that where you, you know, have the best intentions of um, matching the 
the little foam pads to your inks and then mine just end up in a pile after a, a while. <laughs> so I get variations of color which is fine by me. And these oxide inks are just so absolutely just vibrant and beautiful. So these are also an excellent choice to use to color in your stamps if you haven't played around with them. I highly recommend And a little them. goes a long way with this ink if um, if you're not familiar with it, you uh, this is what's so amazing about them is that maybe they're a little um, a little bit of an investment initially, but when you realize how long they actually last because of how little you need when you're using them, then you realize they're they're they'll actually save you money if you use them for more than one purpose. So if you use them for coloring, for mixed media, whatever, um, you realize how much how much use you can get out of them and how long they last. So enough of my oxide commercial. Um, let's see, I think I want to ink the edge of this now that I'm looking at it. I just happened to see this paper on here and I think I would like that on there. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen here. This is just impromptu. <laughs> I wasn't going to go in that direction, but sometimes that's what happens, and that's okay. I may have intended on using it on a different project, but at this point, it got added to the mix here. This has a distressed bit there. Let me make sure that I'm doing this correctly. I think that's going to be my back, and this is going to be my front. This is just a striped green paper. There's green in my image, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. I keep moving my base around. I'm going to adhere this down first and then add that little red strip with the hearts at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and ink up those little parts that I really tore up. And I think, let's see here, I like it better like that. I'm going to adhere this with Beacon Adhesive, applying that to the edges there first. And I'll lay this down. Move it toward the top. And this is going edge, edge to edge. Because the other piece is going to be smaller. So I want this one to be the one that shows underneath. As well as the little strip here. And... That just happened to be on the paper, but because I think it's cute, it's staying. And I th think it slightly matches what I've colored. Now, this is going to go on top, yeah. And so it's not a lot that's going to show anyway. So I really like that. Now, let's distress this without destroying it. So I'm going to be very gentle with this paper. To make this a little more dimensional, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to adhere it on foam, craft foam, and then adhere it to my base. So I'm going to trace this onto the craft foam. Okay. I'll cut off the piece that I need and it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just acting as a little cushion there. So I'm going to apply Beacon Adhesive which works wonderful for foam. You could use hot glue, 
However, the, I feel like the hot glue dries too fast on this material and then it leaves beading, which then adds an unwanted texture to my projects. So I prefer the liquid adhesive in this case. Flip that around, double check and make sure my opening is in the right way or right position. And that just added a little something extra there. So if the corners lift up slightly, that's okay because that's part of the look that I'm going for. So I could actually kind of, you know, uh, encourage it to do that, to adhesive, curl on the edges. the little edges there. Uh, so the paper doesn't actually lift off even though I'm adding that little curl. This one needs a little more. Just keep cleaning your hands as you go along. And this adhesive, if you've never worked with it, will ruin any manicure you have. <laughs> um, okay, so fair warning on that. There's my little card. It's got some distressing. It's blank on the inside. I might stamp a little something here as well. Um, and for that, what I'll do is I'll put it on my platform to make sure that I don't ruin it after all that hard work of coloring. And I'll be back and show you what I add on the inside.